Hi, it's Leslie again, and I'm going to show you today um, this product called Terra Skin. Now, Terra Skin is a little bit new. Um, I've only seen it out for about a year, and it's a special kind of a paper because it's not actually made of paper. It's made with um, a polymer sheet like Yupo. It's like a Yupo sheet but that's been coated with limestone so it's actually known as uh, stone paper as well and the limestone is a really interesting surface because you can actually do everything on it and you get some really neat effects with stuff so I'm just gonna demo and test some materials for you today and you can take a look at how TerraSkin reacts now I used uh, microns to write the titles on here and ink doesn't work so hot because it always smears and this is even after maybe 15 minutes maybe not that quite that long but this has been drying on here for a while so ink maybe it'll dry overnight but it's really smeary on here okay so just so you know, might not be your best choice. So my first off is I'm going to test out some markers, even though I know uh, what the ink is going to do um, with, uh, with smearing and not drying. I want to test it with um, some watercolor over top to see what happens. Okay, so I've got a Pentel brush pen here. And uh, I'll just uh, do some lines and stuff. This is a Copic brush pen. I mean, pen really goes on nice and crispy. It's too bad it doesn't dry because it goes on pretty nice. It's a nice coated surface. <laughs> but if it never dries, that's a problem. Like this is still sitting on here all wet. Oh, and it's totally bleeding. Wow. Okay. Now another thing, I when I first saw this I thought, oh great, I'm going to use this for comics. And then I was drawing on it and I brushed off a little bit of eraser shavings uh, with my hand and my silver ring actually will scratch it. See, it's like silver point. I mean, that's kind of neat. This doesn't erase, by the way. Or maybe it does. Let's just see. And it does a little bit. Yeah, it does. It erases. Oops. But yeah, my friend Kyle uh, Clements told me about how you can do silver point. Golden has a silver point medium that you can use as well, but you can get a piece of silver, two mil silver, um, from jewelry supply places. I don't know of any, but I'm sure you can Google it. And you can put it into a lead holder. And so you put a two mil uh, piece of silver into a lead holder, and then you can use it as a drawing utensil and do silver point. And one of the advantages to silver point, which is nice, is um, it doesn't smear. There's no graphite or anything left behind, so you can use it uh, underneath a marker rendering or a watercolor and it doesn't get dirty. So it's a nice advantage to silver point. This is still wet. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. Um, oh, I'm not done with this yet. But I think I'm going to come back to doing watercolor over this later. 
because this is still really, really wet. I mean, clearly it's it's not a great option for for inking. Oops. Okay. Now this, this kind of works similar to Yupo. Um, where it doesn't, it absorbs a little bit. Like it does absorb more than Yupo does. Okay, but it isn't an absorbent surface. It's not very absorbent. That's why the ink is still sitting on top. It's not very absorbent. So the watercolor sits on top and and runs around, which gives you these great um, kind of uncontrolled effects. And this will probably look really neat when it dries, but it is difficult to control. And like Yupo, you can go over this a little bit, but if you brush it too much, it starts to lift. Okay, so if you wanted to apply a glaze over top, it's almost like you want to get your brush really wet and then lay it in over top. Okay, so you're not disturbing too much of what's going on underneath. Okay, so I'm going to put this aside for right now. Um, I might come back when it dries and attempt See, glazing is really almost non-existent with this because whatever you put down just lifts what's underneath already and kind of reactivates it. Okay, so I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to come back to test the ink because that's clearly not even remotely dry. And I'm going to come back in uh, a few minutes and attempt okay. to paint over that. So let's try acrylic. And I'll be honest, this is where I really got excited because I love watercolor effects. Um, with acrylic except that I find canvas regardless of what I paint on whether I I uh, cover the surface with an absorbent ground by golden and try to replicate um, a paper type of surface it never actually behaves like a watercolor I mean it's acrylic so I don't blame it for not behaving like a watercolor but still that's what I want and this stuff is pretty incredible in how it allows, this is acrylic.
I'm using a fluid. These are fluid acrylics. Now I'm going to let this dry because what's nice about the acrylics is it'll dry and it'll create a, um, a permanent layer so that I can go in over top and I can glaze over it and uh, it'll, uh, it'll behave more like uh, glazing in an acrylic or a watercolor. Okay, and when this dries, actually, there's a neat kind of texture that happens to the surface. And what's nice is with acrylic on a canvas, you can start off and get these plumes and these, um, these backwashes and these great textures. But then as it dries, it tends to haze out a lot, um, whereas on the Terra paper, Terra skin paper, it generally remains um, in the flow, like you've got it. It won't, it won't bleed out and disappear, so it behaves a little more like watercolor. I'm in a bit of a tilt here, so unfortunately everything's falling down. Okay, <laughs> so um, I'm going to scan this and show you what it looks like when it dries afterwards. Okay, I thought I had watercolor crayons, but I don't. I have uh, watercolor um, pencils, and they're actually called Graphic Tint by Derwent. So these are actually water-soluble graphite. Um, that's colored so it's it's kind of a more subdued color that comes through they're actually pretty interesting but they go on nice like colored pencils It's a nice surface for colored pencil. I'm going to try a couple colored pencils. Ugh. Oops. Derwin also has a line of um, colored watercolor pencils called Ink Tense, and they are they're really really bright. Uh, watercolor pencils. They're actually ink pencils. These ones are graphic tint and are more subdued. I like though how there's, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a layering of color. There's like the gray undertone of the graphite.
that comes through. I don't know if you can see it. Kind of nice. Okay, now what's nice about this is you can um, then add water to this to blend. Okay, so let's see how that works on the Terra skin. Okay, yeah. Some of them pick up nicer than others. I'm actually going to get a, uh, use a nylon brush so it's a little bit stiffer and it can pick it up a little bit better. This one doesn't pick up very well at all. Ugh. Scrub, scrub, scrub. I mean, this is working nicely on the Terra skin. It's more of a subtle gradation, and you could use them uh, as a as a drawing tool with the ability to create some watercolor blending effects. Neat. I'm just going to put down some water along the edge here. <clears throat> wow, they're much more intense. If you use them in water. Hmm, that's kind of neat. That surface, the surface of the Terra skin really helps with this actually because it allows the water to sit on top. See, look at the difference there. That's it going on without the water and this is it going on in the water on the Terra skin. Huh, that's pretty cool actually. And it's neat because it's allowing me to layer it as well. That's pretty cool. Okay, I'm kind of excited about that. Next up, um, I'm going to try pastel pencils, water-soluble pastel okay. pencils. So the water-soluble pastel pencils are by Carbothello, are called Carbothello by Stabilo. And they're pastel pencils that are soluble in water. So bear with me because I'm not much of a pastel artist, to be honest. It's not a strength. Ooh. Hmm. Goes on pretty neat. It's really uh it's it's smooth but it's actually textured enough on it to pick up the pencil. Which I'm, I don't know if I'm surprised, but I'm like interested. This is a dry, sorry, this is a dry brush that I'm using right now. 
just wanted to blend and Ugh. no one likes a scratchy pencil To be honest, I can't really judge this because I'm not much of a pastelist. But it doesn't look to be incredible. Ew. I think there might be. I might have used a brush that isn't entirely washed. Hooray me! I've just dirtied everything. not. Okay, I can pretty much say that I'm underwhelmed by this. Next. Okay, let's try some graphite. Um, I don't know. Hmm. Okay, so I've got a, a 4B. This is a water soluble one. Certainly doesn't blend like paper. Now what's nice about this paper though, just so you know, you can roll it and keep it rolled up for weeks and when you unroll it um, it'll go flat again it has no um, memory of the roll and won't keep the shape which is really nice Um, I wouldn't say that this is generally a surface for for blendable graphite. Like if if you can layer it really nicely, um, and it's definitely uh, crisp lines. But the blend is almost nothing. Like there's a little bit off that, but generally this is a 4B and should have blended really crazy on a on a paper. It would have started to smear and get pretty dark pretty quickly. So I can definitely see you using uh, tear skin for graphite uh, in more of a graphic way, not a not a blending kind of medium, but a, a graphic application. It doesn't spread so well either with uh, this is water soluble and you get a much better spread than that on paper. This is a 4B, so it's not the darkest, it's right in the middle. 
And normally there is, even if you scrub, it'll still remain, there'll be a, a faint pencil line on your paper, but generally it picks up more than this. So that's graphite. Now let's try some charcoal. There's some ancient charcoal from life drawing at school. Hmm, it's an interesting surface. I don't know what I did with my blending stomps. Okay, this I kind of like. This is really neat, actually, because um, for whatever reason, the Terra skin is allowing a warm brown to show up underneath wherever I use the, uh, the brush to blend. And that's actually kind of cool. Now, I wonder if it lifts. Charcoal is terrible with... Ooh, wow, it looks really good too. This is neat. Really love the Terra Skin with Charcoal. Love, love, love. That's cool. That was unexpected. Totally, totally unexpected. I was all getting excited about it being a, um, a wet media surface. I hadn't considered being excited about Charcoal at all. Like, why would I? But I am. Wow, and the charcoal is starting to pick up some of the the limestone texture that's in there. Wow, that's really neat. The more I blend it, the browner it gets. It's pretty nice. I like. I very much like. Who would have known? Okay, so that's charcoal, the big surprise of the day. And next up, I'm going to do some Copic. So let's see how the Copics work. I'm all charcoal-y now. <laughs> okay, that was like invisible. Um, Very streaky. Do not like the streaks. 
do not like at all. Well, this wouldn't be my first choice for Copics, that's for sure. It's giving it a neat texture, but it's giving me difficulties in my blends. Like the amount of, of uh, kind of liquid and material that's going down on a more absorbent surface, this would all just have bled into a really beautiful kind of gradation. It wouldn't be streaky like this. I don't know what I'm making here, a little rice ball. A dumpling. So, yeah, it's an interesting surface, but for my taste, it's not a nice surface. Wow, it really pulls it out. Well, let me, let me see. Okay, I mean, that's kind of interesting, but That's pretty interesting. I'm interested by that. Hopefully I haven't totally ruined my Copic marker. Okay, I don't I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just experimenting, just playing. Okay, not my favorite, but everything has its uses, right? It's the way I see it. This shouldn't be a surprise how this goes on. Cuz it went on nice like we saw with the um the graphic tint. Goes on nice. Whoa, okay, something weird's happening here. That's terrible, okay. This doesn't work very well. This is only three layers, and I'm not pushing hard, I'm just flowing it over the top. And how pencil crayons, these are good ones too, they're Prismacolor artist quality. And you can get up to like 30 layers on a piece of paper, like a Strathmore Bristol or something. Over here where the, um, 
where the pencil crayon is already built up a bit, it's actually resisting. I'm going to see. That's eh, okay. I've never considered pencil crayon needing an absorbent surface before, but. Alright, it's okay. It seems to be more sensitive, though, like, I almost feel that I could scratch off some of these layers. Let me keep going. I'm going to build up some more, some pink. I used to love pencil crayon. I used to love this layering, but it takes so long. It is really beautiful though, but so Okay, tear skin's not too bad in this one area. <laughs> it's It keeps taking the pencil crayon. It keeps layering. It's got a really neat um, texture on it. There is a, a very little bit of texture, but um, it's very... It doesn't uh, compete with the pencil crayon, which is nice. really smooth. Anyway, that's neat. I would recommend this for pencil crayon. I, I didn't in the beginning. I thought something weird was going on, but there was not anything weird going on. It's just me. <laughs> okay, so that's my Terraskin test. Um, pick up a sheet and, uh, and experiment with it. I uh, I'm going to scan the finished, dried results of my tests. It will be on the website at lesliedavidson.com or theartistisentrepreneur.com and search under TerraSkin if you are coming to this way, way after where it won't be on the homepage anymore, okay? The search uh, area is in the sidebar. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon.